Hello, my friends. Today is a very good day. We are going to be talking all about the mid-engined V8 supercar by American Motor Corporation that you may have never heard about. We are going to be talking all about the AMX3. <laughs> and the AMX stand for American Motors Experimental. Now, if you aren't familiar with this channel, we do all types of car history. I'm a car history enthusiast. And if you like that, then go ahead and press the subscribe and like button. This ambitious project started in 1969 with dreams of mass production, but it just never would take flight. But first, we need to start with a little bit of AMC's background and their financial situation at the time. AMC was mostly known as the American underdog of the automotive scene. And unfortunately, they had suffered significantly in sales in the 1960s. They were looking for opportunity, and they saw it in the younger markets with sports options. Basically, they thought, we need to chase that pony market scene. And they also realized they needed a halo car. And something to note, though the mid-60s, that was when the baby boomers were coming of age to drive, and they were looking for something that was fast, reliable, and didn't look a thing like what their parents were driving. Lee Iacocca and John DeLorean saw that coming a mile away. In 1968, AMC came out with the Javelin. It got great press and tons of fanfare, but it had lackluster sales. And with the Javelin's lackluster sales, the execs at AMC said, well, let's sport up our image a little bit more. We need to add a high-performance mid-engine supercar to our line. And first, they showcased the AMX2, which was heavily influenced by the De Tomaso Mangusta. And something to think about, well, what else was in development at this time? the De Tomaso Pantera, all right, powered by a Ford V8. And of course, AMC had the Pantera in its sights for competition. Now, Dick Teague and his team were behind the design of the AMX2. They were pleased with, but they were not entirely sure that they wanted to complete the design of the AMX3 completely in-house. And something to note, in the 60s, it was kind of all the rage to say that the design was European, Italian, etc. And so with that, they arranged a competition between Dick Teague and his team against famed designer Giorgetto Gugaro. And at this time, Giorgetto had already founded Ital Design, all right? And under his belt, such famed designs as the BMW M1, all right, Lotus Esprit S1, the DeLorean, the Mangusta, which we had just mentioned was the influence for the AMX2, and also the Isogryphal. Love any of that, love the Isogryphal. My cat is named after Renzo Revolta. Dick Teague's team was not gonna be playing around. They improved on their design and they developed a fully complete fiberglass mock-up and they won. And for financial reasons, AMC decided to outsource production and development to European operations. As I had already mentioned, their purse strings were getting a little bit tight. So they were trying to keep production costs and the sales price low. And now initially they had considered German coach builder Carmen as they had already been building Javelin since 1968 for the European market. Then they had discussions with BMW. Then it gets a little bit muddy. Ital Design with Giorgetto Gugaro comes back to play and is commissioned to manage the project. Salvatore Diamante, who was involved in the fabrication of the prototypes, recalls that it was Carmen who commissioned Ital Design. And in turn, it was Giorgetto with Ital Design who then commissioned Bizzarini to come up with the chassis for the first car. And then BMW would jump back into the fold with development. My apologies if that was a bit of a fuddly muddly explanation, but you can tell that there was a lot of talent in that soup. Essentially, you get that that was an extremely talented team that were in charge of the development of this AMX3. And an AMX3 would go on to prove itself at Monza, reaching 170 miles per hour, which was an equivalent to the Ferraris of the time. And in 1970, AMC would debut the AMX3 
with much acclaim. And just to note, they debuted the car at two different dates in both Rome and New York. And each of those dates were just one day before Ford did a press function for the Pantera. Each time. Late 60s and early 70s, they didn't give a hoot how weird the press antics were. It reminds me of all that odd stuff that went on with the release of the Camaro. But that's a whole nother video. I'll put the link down the way. Don't love this part of the story. Despite such a strong reaction from the press and total fanfare over the car, AMC pulled the plug on the AMX3. They shut down the project. Already struggling so much financially, AMC did not see the AMX3 being financially worth it. The AMX3's reported target price was 12 grand, give or take which was just a few more grand more than Pantera. Also, just to say, eventually Ford couldn't keep up with financially backing the Pantera either. In total, nine chassis were constructed, with six being complete, six, <laughs> and later on a seventh one completed with leftover parts. The AMX3 number one was found, and it's in the process of being restored, and I've been watching it on YouTube. It's a channel called We The Committee, you gotta subscribe and check them out. They're pretty, it seems like it's gonna be a pretty cool journey. Um, I'll put their information in the bottom as well. Ugh, but why did they have to pull the plug, right? What if that could have been their contender? That could have been their halo. That could have been their saving grace. Hmm. It's like, go balls to the wall at that point. You know what I mean? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that possibly if they had gone forth and released the AMX3 that it could have somehow saved, saved AMC? That kind of gets a little bit complicated because there was a lot more history going on with AMC at that time. But shoot, man, if you're going to maybe go down eventually, go down fighting with a really rad mid-engine V8 supercar that looks way cool. By nature, I am way too sentimental for my own good to so like these kind of stories where I'm just like, oh my god, what if, what if it could have been the David to the Goliath of the big three? What if they had survived? So, I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you think. Were there any cool facts that I missed out on? I try to keep these videos like 10 minutes or less. Missed out on any cool factoids, write them down because I like to know, you know what I mean? But elsewise, it's time for me to go have a beer. So, bye! Yeah,